quiet! I need to see your face! Show it to me, Dwight! Show it to me. The Night Flyer is directed by Mark Pavier and is based off the short story from Stephen King. It's about a cynical and jaded tabloid reporter, played by Miguel Ferrer, who's following the trail of a vampire who, while killing his victims, travels by plane. Yes, it's as silly as it sounds. So upon request of one of my subscribers, I'll be reviewing The Night Flyer. If you are also one of my subscribers and there's a movie you'd like me to review in the future, put it down in the comments below. Also, this movie is about 30 plus years old so potential spoilers ahead so right off the bat i'd have to say that this film is definitely one that fell through the cracks i personally didn't know this film before it was recommended to me um, i didn't even know about the short story from stephen king that it was based off of but after watching it i can definitely tell that this is definitely a film that has more of a cult following definitely not a movie that would probably have a lot of high praise among critics and people who go see new movies normally. So going on to the director, Mark Pavier. I hope I have pronounced your name right. I can definitely tell from watching this film he has a specific style to him. And just like his other films, it looks like he tends to be both writer and director on most of the projects he does. And with this movie, it's no exception. And so because of that, I feel like any dominant tone that the movie has or the style in which everybody acts, if there's anybody to look to to why that is, it would definitely be Marc Pavier. Me personally, I'd have to say about his direction style on that portion of it. It's interesting. The actors that are chosen in this film, I think he really brings out probably what they're best capable of doing. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it makes the tone of a scene a little in balance because one person will be very comedic whereas the other person is very serious and if that's the style that he was going for then that's fine but sometimes it can make a scene hard to digest the late miguel ferrer he's played many roles in tv shows and movies and i more notably know him as agent rosenfield from twin peaks i liked him in that show you know he was a dick sometimes and he could be really intense with some characters but at the end of the day he kind of he kind of had like a soft spot to him too. He, he grew to like the characters around him and a role like that could play a part in why he was casted in this movie. He plays Richard Dees in the film, which is this tabloid reporter. He's at a point in his career now where he's very cynical and jaded towards the world. And because of that, he's kind of a dick to a lot of the characters. And honestly, a lot of times to the point where it's hard to get behind this character, this character is essentially the protagonist of the film. So there's a lot of points where... I'll get more into it when I talk about the story portion where I feel they could have worked on that a little better. Not necessarily critique on Miguel Ferrer, it was more the direction style as well as the writing of the said character. So Dan Monahan, he plays Merton Morrison in the film. Uh, Merton Morrison is basically the editor-in-chief of the tabloid that they work at. His character is probably my favorite character in the film only because he's such a character he's really diabolical in a really weird way to the point where sometimes i was watching the movie and thinking like this guy enjoys his job like way too much and adding on to him being diabolical and all there's even a point in the movie where he's like maniacally laughing and it just fades out and that's like the last time you see him now that i look back that's the last time he comes up in the movie it's just it, he just ends on that note and that just basically summarizes how the character is. I love the way that he plays off of Miguel Ferrer in the movie. Honestly, it makes me sad because, like I said, there's a certain point in the movie where he just doesn't come up again and then that's it. But I, I like the banter between the two of them to the point where I kind of wish the movie was centered around the both of them the whole time. But they never go that route, unfortunately. And going on to the third character, actress Julianne Whistle, she plays Catherine Blair, which is this new reporter you know she's bright-eyed and naive about everything that's pretty much unfortunately how far the character goes she comes up every once in a while in the movie but she's not a character that is just in the whole film the way that Richard Dees is in the whole film and that is something that I'll get more into when I talk about the story as well that I felt kind of hurt the film 
it almost makes me feel really bad for Juliet Whistle because I looked at her career and other than this movie, I think she only did like two other films and I really hope this movie wasn't something that played a part in the fact that her career ended. I also feel bad because, again, talking about this actress, it kind of just feels like they couldn't afford to get Phoebe Cates or Phoebe Cates didn't want to be in this film, so they found an actress that looks remotely similar to her. That's what it kind of felt like. Not to say she did a horrible job in this movie, but I just thought that what she brought, pretty much any other actress probably could have brought to the table as well. So I feel like they are maybe just going off the look alone. She was very underutilized in this film, so that's why I'm coming to all these conclusions, honestly. So yeah, other than the three characters I mentioned, there are other characters in the film, more notably people who are being interviewed by Miguel Ferrer's character, but honestly, I mean, it doesn't really go much further than that with them anyways, and along with that, all the characters are kind of stereotypical and if they're not that they're kind of one-dimensional they don't really go that far with them which i feel like again is a note on the writing and the main vampire of the film screen time you know the air time that the actor gets honestly it could have been any other actor so i also personally don't feel like it is noteworthy to talk about the actor as well the way that the movie ends it feels like maybe they were trying to set something up in which maybe there would be another installment where that actor comes up more often but nothing really came after this movie so it's hard to say i'd say that the audio the editing you know the basic things like that as well as the practical effects when the vampire did come up i thought that those were probably the strongest points of the film so yeah all those details aside going on to the story which there's just a lot of elements in this film where i can't necessarily say that the story is the weakest part because i kind of feel like the movie as a whole is kind of imperfect. So I guess let's start off with Richard Deez's character. In the story, I get it. He's supposed to be, you know, very cynical towards the world because of all his experiences being a tabloid reporter and everything. And at the very end, with both his character and Julie Ant Whistle's character, they're trying to be poetic about it. But I just feel like the things that they have that come up at the very end that make you go, oh, okay that's why the rest of the movie was like this i just feel like wasn't rewarding enough and i feel like there are just certain details that could have been switched around or even changed to where it could have made the movie more engaging and more entertaining to an audience like i was saying earlier he's the protagonist of the film and he is the person that you're with the whole time he doesn't have like a partner with him it's just we're just following this character but because of all the stuff I was saying about how he's like really intense and he's kind of a dick to all the characters that he comes by, even being really impersonal and insensitive to some of the people who are distraught from them explaining the stories about the their loved ones that turned out to be victims, like he just didn't care. And again, I know that it's supposed to be poetic because the main line that he says at the beginning of the movie that ties on into the end of the film never believe what you publish i never publish what you believe there are other ways to emphasize what you're trying to get across while at the same time being entertaining and making it so he's not the only protagonist and my main example of that is julian whistle's character catherine blair i feel like catherine blair wasn't used as much as she should have and i feel if they made it so that maybe they were partners in this story from the very beginning to end then there would have been a cool dynamic you would have seen you know her perspective and his perspective there was a scene later on in the film with what they did with it is basically what i was thinking of i felt like they should have had that but it'd be the whole movie so the ending punchline would have been so much more emphasized because you would have seen the character arc of these characters and it would have been a little more organic going back to dan monahan's character at that one part where he's laughing and it fades away that's the end of him like he doesn't come up again and you know this is supposed to be a horror film it's a vampire film there's got to be some way that we can still tie him in and have some kind of closure maybe there's like a he gets what's coming to him kind of situation just something like that but they never go there he just goes away and he's pushed to the side and that's the end of that character for the film and I just thought that was really weird. And yeah, I feel like the most noteworthy things were probably in the third act. The way I felt the movie just ended, 
I have issues with, but when the vampire makes an appearance and the vampire and Richard D's, they have their interaction, I just thought it was interesting. I thought it was entertaining. And I kind of wish that there was more of that in the movie as well. The movie is more of a cat and mouse chase. They don't actually have much interaction in the film. It'd be a lot more interesting and better use of the vampire if there was at least like one more appearance, maybe around the beginning. Maybe they have some kind of history, something like that. That would have been cool, but they're just learning about this vampire and following the trail of said vampire. So if I had any final thoughts, I would say that this is definitely an imperfect film, like I was saying earlier. It has its issues, but there are also elements that I thought were kind of creative, more specifically in the third act. Marc Pavier, he definitely has a distinctive style to him, both directing and writing style, that I feel like probably isn't for everybody. If you're someone who likes the horror genre, you know, more of the campy side of it, I feel like you'd probably like this. If you're someone who likes to watch bad movies with your friends, this is probably a good movie to watch. And for me... Uh, I've never seen a movie like this before. I don't think I'm ever going to see a movie like this again that goes this route, this unique route with Vampire Story. And I found it entertaining, just probably not entertaining in the way that Mark Pavier had intended. So with all that said, I'm going to give The Night Flyer a C-. So what is your favorite vampire film? Put it down in the comments below. As usual, if you like this video, subscribe, and thanks for watching.